uh, commodity because the Englishness of this is, uh, I don't want to say arbitrary, but you know, how can I put this? Like Mayanism is also a commodity, right? Uh, uh, the only reason, uh, as I was mentioning earlier today, uh, that we even know about the Mayans is because of bubblegum, right? Uh, if it weren't uh, for uh, the chicle industry, going and looking for chicle to make bubblegum uh, in the late uh, 19th century, early 20th century, they would have never found any temples there and there would have never been anything identified as uh, Maya, right? Uh, so Mayanism itself uh, is a very uh, kind of fraught concept, uh, as is the 2012 phenomenon, right? Um, uh, total uh, produced Armageddon, uh, you know, uh, uh, to sell uh, books. Um, of which um, I can't help but feel uh, somewhat complicit, right? <laughs> In all honesty. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, okay. Um, uh, because um, uh, 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 the first two poems I'm going to read are of that spirit. They're two poems to Charles Olson. And Charles Olson also wrote a book called Mayan Letters, right? And it was a book about uh, his anthropological uh, work uh, in the Yucatan. And Olson was going in there with um, uh, 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 kind of a 19th century notion of Maya studies, uh, uh, sort of pseudo-hieroglyphic, excuse me, like kind of hieroglyphic. Uh, 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 he didn't really, he wasn't on the cutting edge of what um, uh, Maya studies uh, were. Actually, he was getting a lot of readings of the hieroglyphs from Robert Duncan and through Robert Duncan from Jaime Dangulo. Uh, and that's a whole other story, but um, uh, uh, that is to say he had a much more 19th century theosophical, uh, uh, esoteric understanding of, 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 the, of the glyphs, right? Anagogical, as they say in the field. Uh, so this is uh, uh, two letters to Maximus from Gloucester, and these I wrote the last time I was in Gloucester. And the first one is, uh, uh, has two uh, prefatorial quotes, and it's, uh, one is by Heriberto Yepes, right? Uh, uh, and it's Olsen medía dos metros. Su cuerpo era el gigante que más temía. That is, uh, how, how, how much is dos metros? Like six feet eight or something? Um, yeah, something like that. I guess. Olsen was large. He was the he was the he was he was the giant he most feared. And the other quote is from Vincent Farini: "The water warm as a girl's thighs as we dig holes in the silky sand." Conflictive tongue muted. Separated, wet back come as from space, outer environment, eager to discover world within boundary, rubble, knuckled, rock, salted, green pools, thoughts, excitements, anxieties, feldspar, breakwater, quartz. In half second, as fast as torque of sex takes to lift itself, twisted forcefully into present air for hour or so, white birds gone flying from ocean sand, drizzled legs, colored nearby your dog's digging legs, looking not inside for jewel, but walled inner of wooden box. I am becoming something else, something other than that which I handed myself over to be, reaching hand over stone walls. You run your eye across a boundary without a surface, jewel without a box, or is it more? The him he hands back to himself daily. The soundness of one comes from what follows, to Told pollen collects at warm pool edge where my toes grow in the midst of greeny tadpoles. They will give up gill pouch for lung and outward tail for two legs. What gold? Rock hoppers, but right now trawlers, the hazard, the necessary morning. How in the right place a heart should be to have it golden, to be not underpaid as fishermen for overpriced fish, ice and hold loaded, the lies I hear in your bed with your wife, this seawater's salinity. Circlet of saltwater forest, churning energy applied to dreams insurmountable, not as on eyes, but inside, where sentence flies with birds, bark, paper, gut, bat gut, and dove, of glove white Gloucester and sand hole, the rock dick of Kamatsats of Kuskut land come after long hard circuit, ruin of excess or of ruin and excess of remains from outside regions, so the defects inherent to records of struggle, of theft, of welfare, white cities where welfare is powder milk when it's welfare of strange gods, the water changes the feel of this ground. And uh, the second poem is also titled, A Letter for You, Maximus from Gloucester. But this one has a prefatorial note by Jeremy Prynne, and it says, Stone is already the abstraction of standing, of balance, and dying is still the end of a man's self-enrichment, the reason why he does it. Salt bed gray under the grounding of vocabulary, which takes no weight but in fiat, 
so takes no weight with itself, who value by belief that I, so you, must believe too, or because you do, I must do so too. <coughs> with reference to abstract values, the weight of words relies upon agreed upon intents. The purchasing drive of money implicitly calls for the satisfaction of that for which it stands, the <coughs> reason why it exists. Sea rocks where I slipped, lacerated my leg along the shin, insulting my blood like a cut of meat pulled me closer to an eventual failure, which I feel will have been the method and model for the becoming of something to come. There is the power of environment, to express the models and methods that were a becoming of that which I stand upward from. Here is gold that is not cash, gravity without a halo where something remains but is unyielding, not lost to ideation. The constellation of need, desire, and possibility driving poet to work his inner form, a poem therefrom to come, or rock is cave, and rubble is not coinage where it is transfer and not exchange, or that exchange that is not transfer yields ordinariness that does not transform. So time becomes more than stone, omadeatl, or the push come up through stuff even as images come to us, subject through objects, so all things exist even that what does not exist in their coming arrival approach path of algae and rain filled undertow. Poetry is a principle of seeing time. Vision in poetry is sonic due to a musical dimension where time carries the images into forms. Time is in the body and images from the mind. All else is inflation, empire, or manifest vacuum. And I'm going to read one uh, of the longer poems um, from Boundary Loop. Uh, Richard and I have had a long back and forth about Boundary Loop, sending poems back and forth, right? And these were originally going to go in here, but this became something else ultimately. Uh, uh, so they are kind of almost even prefatorial poems to this uh, project, um, or in this project. And uh, this is Omashak. And uh, Omashak is not a Nahua word. Uh, but it is, uh, excuse me, it's not a Mayan word, it's a Nahua word, right? And it's the uh, cross trails, right? The bifurcations, the uh, uh, splits, uh, wherein uh, a magical transformation can take place. Uh, incredible metamorphoses. Uh, uh, and they're associated, you know, with the genitals, right? Where your body forks out. And, um, and yeah, and also, you know, through Yoruba myth uh, uh, with uh, Robert Johnson crossroads and the, uh, and the Delta, right? Uh, so this is Omashak, cross trails. To choose as by something divided. The dynamics of something becoming itself bent or broken branches left at the water's edge where, where a tree's roots are, a worm's open mouth. We will have chosen not to think of it that way. A little puma claws the wood above us because we cannot think this way or leap except on a heap of ashes. May we be able to follow you. May we be able to walk alongside you May we be able to take you, may we be able to leave you, and the little puma circle down like a leaf helicoidal under the worm's head. Here it is then, the roadside fork from bifurcation on, or folded corner crossed over floors, filthy words crossed over, and furthermore, Ajax makes Newman like, now they use Fanta for maize ceremony to count for as high fructose corn. Syrup where before was turtle shell, today is okay, the empty can bored through with holes. So it is with words we use like blood or honeycomb, proximate or intersect, the rattle, a mountain force to come through the door. It smells of cleaning product, it's okay. Heat of livers cooking in the kitchen, centipedes wash in the bathroom, their feet shave not today, their hirsute legs like a mountain glittering with wet grass and shoots. Oh shit, is our language so insufficient? Our language is insufficient in this house. Turned around, are we a mirror here in a gator's mouth? Tooth after tooth, a calabash bush sprouts up all around us, offering shade and breathing in the leaves. My brother, the wind, I feel death beneath my lungs. Gators with skull drums and painted books bring snakes for incense sticks and worms brought up from the warming mud to perceptibility. They climb up. Oh, should we be heard by paranomesia? You mean by pareidolia? Oh, our language is insufficient in this mud. They rasp on bones and drum with skulls, opening roots like books of the dead. I feel death beneath my lungs. What is lungs? You only worsen the situation. They notice the tree splits in many directions. I am a follower of the tree. 
I rejoice in all that she has done. She has brought sweet air for your nose, what is nose? Life and vigor to gladden your face, what is face? O oh, goddess of the sacred land, she made land shine on your segmented body. For you, she illumined the dark ways. For you, she dispelled weakness in your limbs. For you, she reconciled the world below with the world above. For you, she became a bird and made music. For you, she flew away from her perch, putting away anger in our hearts that we might fraternize together. Today, what is hearts? So we notice the one-legged ibises in the mangrove. Pink shrimp swims under the mangroves. The rock crab climbs up on like a teenage girl with her sister, and their arms out to balance on a horizontal tree. Juts a pool flowing beneath, walking sideways. Looking down, they see abdomens scrunched into triangles of shoulders, like forearms with bony claws clipping, like rock crab clips up on the mangrove tree. The group looking below at my grandmother saying, jump already. I am a follower of the tree. I rejoice in all that I have done. I have brought sweet air for your nose, sky and light to gladden your eye. When, like a bird, it alights on my coiled arms for you, I drink the flood that raises up for you. I split and stretch my limbs. For you, my hands carry the red serpents of the sun. For you, the serpents are chewed in my nests. For you, I fly up from my perch to put away the anger in your heart that you should see the shadow creep alongside mine. The green shadow of the beetle creeps between the stalk's horned eyebrows and unsheathed its wings. Come, I say to my cousin the stone, keep still so this beetle can reassemble its wing and assume its panther skins. On your brow we place a crown of metalized plastic. A Doritos bag has its aluminum lip, laughs at the coronation, corn anointed with cottonseed oil. Modified seed and so protected, suffused is none the less by the sweet silver air of night. Keep still so this beetle can drink from your pools and feel its head pulsing hemolymph. Around your thorax we tie a plate of plastic foam, per durable white perfected form. Cups of feeble glimmer of rain looks down through and behind it at a sky filled with lights and veiny webs. Keep still so this beetle can see his cousins flying mid the veins. Through the leaves flies then locust, throw shadow on the dim green buzzing haze. In the haze made of the dark cloud, in the haze made of rain and mist of pollen and grasshoppers, where the dark mist hides a book, the path to which is on the window, where the intrinsic lightning flashes through the heat, where the heat rains blink high on top. O oh, book of the storm, with your binding of dark cloud, come closer to us. With your leaves wrapped in dark cloud, come closer. With the dark thunder above you, come soaring. With the flashing cloud at your feet, come to a soaring. Your eye floats on the foam collected, on the flowing pools interpret a word, ventures a living relationship with what you have read or heard, acts outwardly through you a node who nonetheless discipline its boundary. Effects of an overflow which meets the overflow of words, you are incommensurate with the expression, outside of which is break from habit, us watch plants of all kind who plant by placement alive of the antimonies, personhood of air and stone, where the sky strikes out a trail for vegetation from the center of a stone reach, junctures of branch, a bridge, where the human sense she lives between worlds, looks over to the so handsome beetle who says, and that's where this book ends, and I have a few more minutes to read where it picks up again, and that's in a longer work, which is a novel of sorts that I'm working on. So the, that part ends with this beetle who's now gonna sing his epo epic song, right? And um, uh, the beetle is deluded into believing he's a serpent. Uh, so uh, if I don't have enough time, I'll, I'll cut myself off. Uh, and I won't read the prefatorial uh, uh, notes to this. And this is called Omashak II, The Snake Dialogues, Book One, Heresies of the Humans. I am the serpent who tastes its own eye. My fire stares out from destruction. I awaken to it like a man to his loneliness, stretching over counters and across streets. I walk as if with feet into its sun and wind destroying me. I disparage the sunlight, step on my own back and push my face into the dirt. I try to rise up like a tree to his bifurcations, splitting into prayer and silence, whispering, and then I step off, a star falling to earth, a meteor headed through the mesosphere to collision with my crawling shape, 
My body is fish through open air. I am silenced by my upper neck. There is some kind of swimming there. I follow deeper into the water. My friends are there. They take off their shirts and show me things. It makes me smile to do this, to be around them and listen to their songs. We drink ourselves blind and steal each other's recollections. I dream that I am a fat turtle swinging my ass through a pile of leaves. I laugh, sticking my head into a shell while a boy walks by not noticing me. I am an old fart with wrinkles all over and weird ideas about economics. I think that people are searching through my trash, so I throw fewer things away. I remember many things that have happened to me. Sometimes, I experience deja vu 30 or 40 times a day. When I crawl off to calm myself, I stop again thinking I've already tried crawling this way and without avail. My tongue presses frustrated worms against the roof of my mouth, but I prefer the water. My body is fish with hardened scales. Inside, its liver regenerates the folds to be used for prophecy. I read the folds on the tissue of blood and write the meaning out on the sand. A human squats to see my translation, but it does not understand. That one does not read, but some do. Literate eyes observe cautiously the way I move. They watch me go back and forth on a platform. That beast, they whisper to themselves. I am beast with hot breath in the cool dawn. My power animal is the gnat. The land flows out from his eye and deltas a piercing angle. His wings cut across the wind like scissors, erratic and glittering. They fly up from the grass and circle above me, looking down. His shining eyes, fearless and dull, a faint blur through the clear sky. I follow him and share his fearlessness and exaltation. When the molt thickens around my eye, I lose him. I wait, dimmed by the fading light, until I find him again, twisting like a raised blade of grass in the luminous air. He grows out of it like a cloud. It is cool like the dawn. If it can be that the dawn is seen inclined vertically like a pool, I bend my head into the pool, entering the hollow but stop halfway, half of me, inside, with the other, out, half a clock, suck, <laughs> half a clock of blood thuds in time, cradled beside a silent twin. There is no speaking to him then, powerful and without form. Mist from the silence issues, effect moving without words. It collects from dissipated moisture to a throne, Pulling back, I am taken with the thought onto a throne, cool on my face, and I hear him like a creature walking around on the roof above me. The room is palatial, although I am in it, I am not of it. Like a cock with its like a cock from its coop, my bone feet to exposure step where I follow. I am thrilled by the howl of coyotes, although I fear them more than anything else. Those who walk silently in the shimmer of the moon force my ear wide open to the subtlest pieces of sound. The breath of trees and the hissing of shadows all over the hills are swallowed whole by my mind. I am voracious for tones, parallels, and perpendiculars. My claws leave definite lines measuring infinitude in miniature perceptions. I get ecstatic in attention in spite of myself. I am winged. I see it in the mirror, but every time, still, it shocks me. I coil my wings into shells, a form of fire. If I had a hood, I'd hear the roar of lions when I pulled it back from my neck, but I am hairless especially when I reunite with her tender snail whom I have crushed. Her breath is composed of flowers. Its leaves are footprints, like an old plant, but they are also its feet she walks with to meet me. Like the moon, she disappears, but then she meets me, looking through the leafy greens at a supermarket. I buy a can and some cans of beer. In the froth, sleep rises, but it is not the sleep of dreams. My dreams exhaust me. All night journeying to stand before a tribunal of angels, suspicious of my flight, to the edge of the earth, there were cabbage fields and unpaved paths shimmering in the heat. A mirage made them look human, with dark orange blossoms and eucalyptus white tufts. Wind breaks and long wavy trees peeled the scales from the bark and left them looking naked and familiar as movies, this ancient scenario. One shook my hand, he or she said, good morning, Mr. Snake, who is it that brought you here? I came by myself, unlikely. I raced with them to a valley on the second planet from the sun. A victory it reduced all things, made me double even to them. Wise and powerful and kind, they are by no means benevolent and still suspicious of me. Child who learned how to fly a plane. Reckless, they repeat. They wanted the name of the demon who taught me these things, but there was none. Over the valley on that star spreads a slum with endless ingenious advertisements. There are shanties of tin and cardboard paper to protect from sulfur rains. Its canals look like avenues on the surface, 
You must help defend against this fate on your planet, I was told, and came back. With me came a map of the kind that cannot mandate conquest. It showed rain falling on the pools of human souls, a way of the world which looked up from stood for the blood red in the sky as above so below I caught myself, thrusting the map into my throat. I choke while another tests me with whispers to see how long I can stay on before they put me to sleep. Time is a case of some kind, easy to hold small things in but impossible to hold on. This one says, while they snake outside time, they are mocking me, but I go anyway, my mind awake, and they appear to be shocked. They told me other things, other places we went, but that one's voice, a rush of cars through my esophagus crowded, dropped like carbon in the deep sea. <laughs>